It's kind of a controversial topic, but do you actually need this for your CA Corvette? Let's get it. Uh huh. Drop. Uh huh. Top. Uh huh. Drop. Uh huh. Top. What you doing? Drop the top. Drop the top. Drop. Top. Drop. Top. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, James Atkins TV, and I'm back with another vlog. And in today's vlog, we're actually gonna get a modification going for the C8 Corvette. And it's kind of a controversial topic, but do you actually need this for your C8 Corvette? Let's, let's get it all put on and let's see. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this will not be a very long, drawn out video. Man, it's a beautiful day outside today. Super bright. Anyway, this won't be a long drawn out video about um, what it all, what all goes into the process of doing this. There's a ton of videos and step-by-step -step videos on YouTube. I'll give you guys the gist of everything and I guess my take on what it is that I'm doing and we'll just go from there. Um, if you have any questions about the product, where I got it from, um, I got it from, I believe, Angry Off-Road. Um, it's a C8 strut tower cover. Um, and yeah, let's just go ahead and get direct into the video. So, long story short, GM came out with a outstanding vehicle, but they didn't take into account this one problem that I guess a lot of other YouTubers spotted out, and somebody decided to go ahead and uh, create a fix for it. What is that problem that I'm talking about? Simple. On the C8 Corvette, um, On the C8 Corvette, after you take all these plastics off of the vehicle, the uh, strut towers for the C8 sit in these areas, right? And these areas have no way for the water to drain out of the strut tower. Hence, there's pooling in the strut towers. Why is this a problem? Simple. Um, this is made out of aluminum, so there won't be any rust. But however, there will be some form of corrosion in the strut towers, which can potentially become a problem later on in life. If you ever decide to change your suspension out or anything like that, it might get hard to those uh, hard for those bolts to come off, which could potentially cause you issues later on down the line. So, whether or not this is a justified purchase or something that you must have. Um, I think that that is a subjective question that maybe you have to answer for yourself as it, as it relates to your own C8 ownership. However, I believe it was something I wanted to do just to protect the life of the vehicle, the longevity of the vehicle. So I'm going to take this off and see if there's any water inside for me. And then we'll go ahead and install the, uh, the strut tower covers. All right, guys, so here's the packaging. Like I said, got it from Angry Off-Road. Um, they send it in just a flat rate envelope. Um, there's just plastic inside, so they didn't really need to do anything fancy for this. So, nothing fancy with the packaging. Like I said, this is uh, uh, plastic pieces. Um, they're pretty sturdy, pretty, pretty hard firm. Um, made in the US of A. This is one of the strut tower covers. And on my C8 Corvette, I have the matte rod control. So there's this little cutout for the uh, circuitry for the matte rod control. Um, if you do not have matte rod control in your car, then you, could, you will opt for the C8 strut tower covers that does not have matte rod control. And they also provide a zip tie for the passenger side of the uh, install because there's nothing for it to like, there's, a, there's not a bolt there to hook on to. So I'm assuming this is the driver's side and wait. So this is the passenger side and this is the driver's side. I haven't started her up in about a week, so let's see what she sounds like. Oh man. All right, folks. So to cut down on the wind noise, I went ahead and turned the Corvette around just to cut down on the wind noise for you guys. Uh, in order to take these panels out, there is like these little panels just gotta pop out here. There's one right here, there's one right here, and then this kind of like comes out there cool um, and then there's another one on this side as well 
Let's see if I can get the whole thing in the frame. This another one over here. Pop one, two, three. That wasn't even in there actually. this stuff can be stored down inside of the middle part here um, and there is this part down here I'm just gonna move this off to the side. We can kind of see that I don't have any water in here whatsoever. Okay. Hey, let's see if you guys can see that. I don't have like almost any of There's a little bit of water. There's a little bit of water right here. You can see there's a little bit of water right there. Um but if I'm looking in here, it's pretty, pretty dry. There's, there's not any water in here really at all. Let's see if it, yeah, it's completely bone dry. Oh, I have a little water on this backside, a little water on the backside. Um, so I'm gonna take a, a microfiber, stick it down there with a screwdriver and try to get out any of that moisture that's down there before I actually enclose it and cover it up. So that goes to the question of whether or not this is an important mod. This is an absolute must do. Um, let me also be honest and say that this car has been in the rain a total of zero time. It has never been in the rain. It's never, it's never been outside um, in the rain. But I will say that I have washed this car um, extensively. So um, whenever I'm using a power wash, you would assume that water would get down inside by the way in which people are explaining this. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and get this install and started. It. It's a very, very fairly simple install. Um, so, shouldn't take us any time to do it. Let's go ahead and get it done. I've already taken the time to stick the microfiber down inside of there to get any of the water out. Like I said, there wasn't any much water in there, so no dramatic effects there. All right, YouTube, so what's crazy is uh, as I go to start this, I found a a rock. I found a rock. Oh snap, that's not good for the paint. I found a rock sitting on the inside of this, um, inside of one of these holes. And I also found a completely loose bolt and nut sitting in the other side. And I'll show you where that was on the other side. So I don't know where this, I don't know where this could go. Um, hopefully it's not to anything important. GM, what is this going to? <laughs> Leave a comment below if you, if you have a idea of where this of where this should go. This is what I found. Like, where do you guys think this, this should go? There's this little plastic harness that comes out. You pop that out of there. This is a if it wants to come out. This thing was really in there. Um, it has a little tip to it that kind of pushes inside of that hole. If you have a pry tool or something like that, that might be able to help you get this, wiggle this out of there. But it's a, such a weird angle. You just really pretty much just gotta pull it put some elbow strength into it to get it out. Tell me anywhere so I can take out this bolt right here. That is it, that is a very snug fit. Now that's all for me to do is to tighten her up. All right, and she's all done. It's a very snug fit as well. Yep, she's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and get the passenger side done now. All right, so for the passenger side, you have to do it a little bit differently because there isn't a bolt or anything for it to hold on to. Um, I've already cleaned off the backsplash where the double-sided 3M tape goes. And then after you put this and position this in the right spot, you wanna take this um, zip tie and wrap it around this, uh, this holes right here, this metal holes. All right, folks, so I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my method for putting this in. Um, I've been seeing it on YouTube by other YouTubers doing it, and it looked a lot more difficult the way that they were doing it versus the way I'm about to show you. So uh, once I get this three, this double-sided tape layer off, the protective tape, 
I'll show you exactly how I do it. All right, now that I got the, the protective layer off of the tape, what you wanna do here is first start by taking the top off of this little reservoir. And you want to push it straight in as if you were gonna line it up evenly, right? And then angle the back end or the right side of it all the way down towards the uh, actual strut tower. And you will see, you will see that it just falls deeper and deeper into the little gap, right? After you put it inside the gap, you just wanna align it, move the tank over, and you're done. Just that simple. And you are done. That's pretty tight, pretty snug, it's not going anywhere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this video has been helpful for you. Uh, I'm gonna spare you guys the time with me putting back on the plastics. Nonetheless, uh, please drop a like on this video if I've been able to help you while I follow through the install or if you just like the video. Drop a comment down below. Please tell me where you think that bolt should go. Um, and as well, subscribe to the channel, man. I really appreciate all the support you guys showed out in the last video. I embarrassed myself by calling a line of S2000s Miatas and you guys definitely jumped on me about it. So I really appreciate you, know, you guys catching my blunders. Um, you guys went crazy on the 50 like goal. So continue the support, continue liking it up the videos, continue sharing it. And until the next time, guys, your boy, I'm out.